And now the time arrives for questions. Well, one question to be exact, because we're slightly over time, but I was let know by the organizers that Akkor there have some questions. Pedig, uh, uh, there are, <laughs> so there are some questions that have arrived from our public. And uh, I'd like to ask those of our panelists who did uh, interact with us on artificial intelligence that the question that was brought to our attention by the House of European Diplomacy is how can EU ensure that the use of AI does not replace but complements humanity in the workplace? So Professor Marku, Professor Brand and Professor Kanarsa, if you can expand on any angles to this question. Well, if I may start. Um, uh, I, well, th the thing is, the question is, what, what does replace mean? Um, very likely, uh, AI will uh, change the workplace and the future of work um, beyond recognition. I mean, basically, what we what we understand by uh, by the workplace nowadays will be an entirely different phenomenon in the in the future. Uh, and um, this being said, uh, it is very unlikely that humans will be replaced. Uh, the question is rather, uh, what will the context be? in which humans act in the future. And uh, again, I would argue, um, uh, let that development uh, happen and uh, don't try to curtail it because one way or another, I mean, this is something that can be, can be observed throughout history, uh, things change, they, they change considerably, but um, one way or another, they will always have things will always fall into place. So uh, maybe that answers part of the question. Thank you very much. Professor Marku or Kanarsa? Um, I, I have to say that, you know, what I just heard is uh, very much uh, a, the attitude uh, in which that I'm very skeptical of. It, it, it's a very deterministic attitude about the sort of inevitability of technological progress. And I understand that there's a very, uh, circumscribed school of thought um, about you know the cyclical nature of history and I I, uh, I understand that but I, I think it would be uh, I think the panelists mentioned at the beginning that there was no one ever complained about earlier junctures of uh, technological history um, indeed a, a big portion of what I wrote my PhD on was what people thought about the radio and the the plane and in vitro fertilization and uh, I can speak for common law jurisprudence and in in the uh, the UK and Canada, uh, all of these junctures were met with the kind of, uh, you know, lawyers threw their hands up. We, this is all new. This is fundamentally distinct from anything that came before it. We have to rewrite uh, our fundamental, uh, you know, uh, justifications for law, um, whether it was the Kodak camera giving rise to uh, you know, Justice Brandeis uh, writing so passionately about the right to privacy. Um, uh, it, I remember in the course of my research that the ham radio in the 1950s and 60s, there was a article from the uh, Yale Law Review uh, at the top of my head that decried the ham radio as the most dangerous thing to American society because it would allow truck drivers to converse with prostitutes and it would lead to a boom in prostitution on the base. On the, so I, I think it's not true to say that, you know, uh, we have never had these debates before. It's that AI presents us with a fundamentally more important uh, one that we probably should have had about something like the atomic bomb, but had no say in whether we should do any of these things in the first place. Um, and I think that this debate and the tenor of all these debates, as starry eyed as they can get about uh, shiny new faster everything, uh, they are very much encroaching upon fundamental aspects of what it means to be a person and who has control over what in society. So this idea that you know everything will fall into place uh, inevitably, uh, it, that's very much one I resist and I think is dangerous um, because it literally, ab it, it, to me, it abdicates responsibility for doing anything and making decisions in the present under uncertainty, which is the only way we make decisions. Thank you very much for this view. And I'm not sure if Professor, Kanarsa is still with us or wants to? Uh, industrial revolution is that uh, uh, contrary to the previous ones, uh, 
the the economic sector that is concerned is the services one and which explains probably also the the level of reaction among different uh, professional community co communities especially the the legal one um well, as I mentioned in my presentation, as uh, other um, economic evolution or revolution, uh, we are mostly talking about gains of productivity. So uh, th it makes sense to wonder whether, um, well, uh, humans would be replaced in, in, in different sectors, including the, the legal one. When, when I look at our students in, in the different uh, law schools in, in the world, you have to think about what will be their professional life uh, in 50 years time. And, and probably um, the fact that uh, more and more technological tools are used, including artificial intelligence, means that they will uh, probably have more time with the truly human uh, skills, you know, so talk to the client or to, to the citizens, generally speaking, and, and spend more time for high value uh, tasks. So if a machine can do for you what is mostly repetitive, uh, I don't think it, it is a, a, a bad evolution because it means that you know, humans and, and especially or uh, in, uh, among others, lawyers will be will be able to focus on the uh, most sophisticated tasks and and including technical ones, but also let's say human ones. Um, and I don't know if, if you share also the uh, this view, but sometimes I have the feeling that uh, with our technological environment, there is a process of reification of uh, natural persons in, in the sense that your personal data, as you know, uh, has been exploited and to a large extent is still exploited, even if uh, in the European Union, as we know, uh, we are not in the, the worst uh, situation. And at the same time, there are talks about personification of artificial intelligence and so on. So it seems a bit strange, you know, to see that uh, the, posi the respective positions are to a certain extent crossing. So when you are receiving more than uh, 100 or 200 emails a day, and probably it happens to most of you, uh, I'm not sure that you are still the one in charge, you know, uh, and to a certain extent, you are the object of the of the system. So again, I think the, the question makes sense, even if, if I agree with the, uh, my colleagues in saying that uh, we have the capacity to adjust and especially the, the, the legal framework and lawyers have the capacity, I think, to adjust to uh, these, uh, the, these changes, uh, the, these evolutions. Thank you very much. And I noticed that in the meantime, our camera has been shifted and provided us with a bird's eye view of the audience. And we've taken a bird's eye view of the situation regarding digitalization uh, as far as the future of Europe goes uh, as well today. So thank you for all of our panelists. And uh, since we're about 20 minutes over time, I think it is due time to close the panel. The operation was successful. The patient has survived. Thank you all for your attention. <laughs>